course for battery makers competing with suppliers in Indonesia and China at its undeveloped or undeveloped mine in Tanzania. Joining us here at Post 9 is Chris Showalter, Live Zone Metals CEO, on a big week for at least the metals complex around the world. Congratulations. Good to have you. No, thanks. And thanks for uh, having me here. Talk about where the company fits in this sort of long-term uh, narrative of what's going to happen to metals demand mm -hmm. as EVs become adopted around the world. Yeah. I think when you look at the this massive anticipated transition to this electric economy, I think you know one of the biggest challenges is not only getting the metals but doing it in a clean clean way. I mean, we can we can source more metal, but you have to meet the standards that are being demanded by the OEMs, the battery producers, and so um, the CO2 targets that are being you know required not only from people companies. Um, what we do is we provide a clean processing technology combined with unlocking the next. A uh, really big source of nickel and cobalt in Tanzania. So we're busy developing that mine right now. Big customers right now? Um, so we will be in production end of 2026, and so we're engaged with all the, the auto manufacturers, the battery manufacturers, and so we're talking to them right now. And uh, I think one of the big attractions for us is we're going to have one of the lowest CO2 footprints. And so when you look at where nickel comes from specifically, it's not a very clean process. And so nickel is very challenged. So we're providing the next biggest, cleanest source of nickel with a very low CO2 footprint. So that's that's going to be required by the world going forward. And so we're really there providing those solutions right now. And so how does that technology work, the HydroMet technology? Why is it cleaner mm -hmm. and more efficient? Yeah, so so the mineral processing uh, value chain, if you look at it historically, it, it's really set up through a really a, a series of pyrometallurgical processes. So big furnaces, smokestacks, smelting, throwing everything in there and burning it at very high temperatures. And we can do better. And so what HydroMet is, it's really it's a water-based clean processing technology. Um, we have 120 global patents, and so we're in the process of really implementing and commercializing this technology to clean up the mineral supply chain. And that's really, if any of these companies are going to meet their CO2 demands, they have to start doing it in a cleaner way. And nickel, if you listen to Elon Musk and Tesla, about 38% of their CO2 footprint is the nickel contained in the lithium-ion battery. So you got to clean up nickel, and that's what we're demonstrating in Tanzania right now. And in terms of overall, I mean, nickel right now, most of it to, to date is used for stainless steel. So yeah. if you're going to meet these targets for how much we're going to be powered by, by battery technology, how much more in aggregate has to be produced? Yeah, no, you're right. So, so the bulk of the demand is stainless steel, but the largest demand going forward is going yeah. to be from the EV industry. And so that's going to be roughly around 20% compounded annual growth going forward for nickel and cobalt. And so there's, there's nickel coming on stream in Indonesia, but when you look at the, the process of how they mine, specifically in Indonesia, that's open pit, that is you know, going through multiple pyrometallurgical steps, and that's going into big furnaces. So it's a very, the new, the new supply coming online is not the type of clean quality um, that really the, the OEMs and the, uh, the world's gonna demand going forward. So we have, um, you know, we believe is the largest, highest grade nickel sulfide mine. Um, and we're partnered importantly with uh, BHP's invested 100 million. And so they're our partner in Tanzania. It's a big step for BHP to come back into Africa and to do it in Tanzania through the Kabanga project. Um, so that's a big demonstration of, you know, these deposits are important. You have to go to where they exist, but you have to process these in a way that's going to meet the demands for the industry, which is cleaner processing technology. Uh, reflections on the SPAC process? How's it been? Yeah, I think with, with Go Green, uh, you know, what we saw was really you know, the, the partnership with Go Green. Um, I think the SPAC market has been challenged over the past year, but to identify like-minded, you know, partners, I mean, Go Green, you know, their whole, you know, their whole vision is to, you know, identify clean, you know, processing companies that can make a difference going forward. And so, so philosophically, we had a very easy, you know, connection and chemistry. And so it's kind of nice to come to the market, come listen to NYC, but come with a partner as well. Um, so they've been incredibly supportive and, yeah, we got more, more to do. Yeah, a, a lot more, I would imagine, the coming years. Well, the stock turned around, obviously, mm -hmm. and as we said, a difficult day for equities overall. But we'll be watching you guys. Thanks for coming by. Oh, excellent. Thank you for having me. Thank Thank you, great.